So let's talk about goals. Welcome to Plan, Prep, Pray. Hey, girly. My name is Wendy, and I am a homeschooling stay-at-home mom of four little ones. And on this channel, I talk about all things homeschooling, homemaking, mommy self-care, and kids empowerment. So subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. This is a collaboration hosted by yours truly. So don't forget to check out the playlist in the description and make sure you check out all these other homeschooling mamas and check out what their goals are, how they come up with their goals, whether or not they do goals, why they do goals, all the goals things for their new year. <laughs> Definitely check out this playlist. Um, it's, good. it's a good one, guys. <laughs> so I'm going to begin by going over how I come up with my resolutions and the different tips and tricks that you can use to help you come up with your resolution. Then I'll go into what my goals and resolutions are for the new year. So for me, it's time for a change. So when coming up with goals, I have these six criteria that I stick to. And I thought it would be helpful for you guys to know them for coming up with your goals. So first things first, reflect on your year. So Think about your past year. <laughs> See what worked, what didn't work, how did it go? It's just so important to take that time to reflect on your year. Number two, what do you want? What do you want to change? What would you like to achieve? But the, the one thing about this, about thinking about what you want and what you would like to achieve is to be very realistic. Set realistic goals, okay? That's top priority. <laughs> Number three, you wanna create SMART goals. You wanna make sure it's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So um, that is so, so important to making sure you actually accomplish these goals. Number four, we are creatures of habit. So figure out what habits or triggers you can associate with each of these goals. What happens is we set these goals, but because they're not part of our daily flow or because they're not a part of how we naturally function, they just don't work. So make sure that you figure out what habit you need to change in order to accomplish your goal. Figuring out what habit you need to change helps you to play offense rather than defense and helps you to resist friction when it comes to setting your goals. You know what I mean? So that it's not so hard. So if your goal is to work out and if you say, okay, I'm going to set the habit that I am going to have my workout shoes on the floor and I'm going to put my workout shoes on right when I work out. When, right when I wake up, then it makes it easier for these this thing to actually happen so that there is no like, okay, where are my workout shoes? I have to go look for them, da, da, da. And by the end of it, you're just like, forget it. I'm not going to work out. You want to try to fall in love with the process. Try to fall in love with the things that you are doing rather than fall in love with the end goal that helps it to become more realistic to actually accomplish your goals. So if you fall in love with working out, you're going to lose weight, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, if you fall in love with the process, it's more likely than not that you are going to accomplish your goal. Number five, you want to start small and you want to document everything. It helps so much to be able to look back and be like, oh, okay, I, I have been doing something. I have been accomplishing something. Sometimes when you're in the mix, you don't even really notice. Like I remember when my husband was losing weight, like he feels like he looks exactly the same. But like people who haven't seen him in forever see him now and they're like, oh my gosh, you've lost so much weight. So it's just really important to document the process so that you can actually see change happening in real time. 
Number six, create an action plan. Because a plan without action is just a dream. <laughs> I don't know if that's the same, but I mean, you gotta have something that's gonna make it work, you know? It's so important to have a step-by-step -step plan of how you're actually going to make this goal come about. Reflect on your year. What do you want? You wanna create SMART goals. So figure out what habits or triggers you can associate with each of these goals. You want to start small and you want to document everything. Create an action plan because a plan without action is just So my goal for this year is steward. Now I went to um, <laughs> a couple of my, uh, my friends, uh, Ryan from Mom on a Mission and uh, Megan from Pennies and Salt. And I asked them, what does it mean to be a good steward? And the two things that they told me was, a good steward uses God's wisdom to care for what God has entrusted them with. A good steward is using your resources re responsibly in a manner that honors God. And so for me this year, is I wanna be a good steward. I wanna be a good steward of my time, of my energy, of um, my talents, of my roles. I want to be very wise and intentional with these things that God has entrusted to me. So I've got six categories that I, want, that I have um, goals for. So I'm gonna go over the categories. I'm probably not gonna be, I'm not going to be going into the action steps and all the different things, but just know that every category I've dived deeper into and created SMART goals for and done all the things that I told you about in the beginning. But um, first things first, I have goals for this channel. I have goals for you guys. My ultimate goal and my ultimate purpose is to help you mamas um, be able to overcome your overwhelm, to find peace in the midst of chaos, to be able to balance it all and do all the things that God has entrusted to, to you. My goal is to provide you with resources, routines, tips, hacks, all the things to help you mamas be able to accomplish this huge task that has been entrusted to you. The biggest thing that I've been getting from you moms is that Wendy, your routines are great. You're working up at 4 a.m. That's amazing. You go girl. Wendy, you've got this amazing cleaning routine and this amazing meal. I can never do that or I can never do that. And so I wanted to figure out a way that this new year that I can help you guys find routines, systems, and resources that work for you. Because just because it works for me, that doesn't necessarily mean that it works for you. And so I have a whole video coming out on how I plan on doing this using A Year of Living Productively by Dr. Melanie Wilson. So stay tuned for that video coming out next week. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video. But in that video, I dive deep into how I'm going to be conducting experiments for you guys to better help you guys find routines, systems, productivity hacks that work for you. The other thing when it comes to the channel, guys, I know it's been almost a year and I don't have a set day at all. <laughs> so, I'm announcing we have a set day, guys. I am going to be releasing videos every Tuesday and every Friday, Saturday, Monday, Friday, Saturday, Monday. I am going to be releasing videos every Tuesday and every Saturday, guaranteed, <laughs> God willing, and guaranteed 
for you guys. I may come out with an additional video, but the guaranteed days, Wendy's coming for you on Tuesdays and Saturdays from now on, okay? So that's our day. That's my commitment to you guys for the new year, 2021, okay? Um, also, Tip Tuesday's coming back with a little bit of a flair. We are doing themed months now when it comes to Tip Tuesday. Like I said, I wanted to get different routines and different resources and different mamas to come on and talk about, for example, our first January preview is going to be cleaning and organizing. And so I'm going to have different moms come on every Tuesday to talk about their cleaning routine, their organization hacks, and see how different moms do it so that you can pull from different resources and create this beautiful thing that is your own when it comes to creating your own systems and your own routines. Now, personally, for my family, I think it's important to set family goals for the year too, or family intentions for the year. And so not to dive into great detail, but for my family personally this year is I want to focus more towards a gospel-centered parenting. My husband sits down with the kiddos to eat meals, most um, dinners, um, when he can, but me, I'm usually running around and grabbing water and doing this and doing that and just honestly making excuses. So I want to prioritize sitting down with my kids every night and having dinner and just really um, sitting in that moment. And so that's another um, goal as well as just some just a whole lot of other things when it comes to my family. Pretty much, I want to have fun as a family. And I want to um, prioritize family a lot more, if that makes sense. Not just prioritizing taking care of my children, which is, you know, as a priority, but more so having fun, being in the moment, being present, enjoying this time that we have. Because like they say, the days are long, but the years are fast. <laughs> so I really want to take advantage of this age and stage that they're at and just relish in it and live in it and enjoy it rather than being so overwhelmed and over and just burdened by all that I have to do. So family goals. Number three, finances. Now I am not a budgeting channel. Check out Lydia's channel for that. But <laughs> but my ultimate goal is to be completely debt free. And I've got we've got steps and all that stuff to get there. But finances. Number 4, homeschooling. I have a video coming out on Saturday, my first official day, um talking about our mid-year um check-in. And in that video, I go into all things new that are happening for this new year. So check out that video, subscribe again, hit the notification bell so that you can, <laughs> so that you don't miss that video. Um, but check out that video to see all things homeschooling for the new year. Number five, faith. Now for me, I told my friends this, I, I want to fall in love with God. I don't know um, if that makes sense, but I want to fall in love with God. I want to um, dive deep into him, get to know more about him, um, just develop a stronger, deeper relationship and a stronger, deeper connection. And so one of the things that I am really going to be prioritizing in 2021 is a Sabbath. Want to take a Sabbath and rest and dive deep into the word and dive deep into talking to God, um, as well as daily devotions, as well as accountability. I've got an amazing group of um, YouTube mamas that I've connected with accidentally this year. And um, we've got an accountability group going on. And so I really want to foster that accountability group and be um, helpful as well as um, fully taking advantage of that group to stay in the word and stay connected um, when it comes to faith. 
six, fitness and health. Now guys, I have not been doing good. I have not been doing good um, when it comes to my fitness and when it comes to my health, to be honest. I, I do work out for the most part, um, or I have good periods of working out for the most part, but I have been a poor steward of my health. Um, there are days that I will only eat one meal. Honestly, if my husband's not cooking for me half of the time, everybody's eating and I'm not eating. I'm breastfeeding still, <laughs> TMI. Oh, <laughs> I'm breastfeeding still and I don't drink enough water. Um, I have been nauseous and feeling sick to my stomach all the time. I'm not pregnant, but <laughs> I've been nauseous and feeling sick to my stomach after I eat and haven't um, seen a doctor and haven't figured out what's going on because, you know, mom's last, but is that an excuse? No, I sit here and I, and I preach to you guys about taking care of yourself and mommy self-care and stuff like that. And I just haven't been a very good steward of caring for myself mentally as well. So my goal in 2021, when it comes to my fitness and my health is being very intentional about prioritizing that. Now, like I said, every single last one of these goals have smart goals that are written out for them, have action plans, are attached to certain habits and triggers. And yes, it took some time. <laughs> you know, it's not something that was like, ooh, let me quickly write my goal. Like, no, it took some time. And um, to be honest, some of these goals I've been working on since December 1st. My husband doesn't believe in New Year's resolutions. He said, your resolutions start now. And so I've been very intentional about, you know, starting and not waiting for a particular time to get started, but to just get started. And so that's my, um, that's my push for you guys. Just get started. Don't wait till some arbitrary date to start. Even if it's January 13th, when you're listening to this, that's the best time to start. Just start, attach it to a habit, um, write a smart goal, take some time to document, make sure you're do you have some documenting system. Um, make it work because it's important to set intentions because if you're not setting intentions, you're still setting intentions, if that makes sense. Like you're, you're doing something to get some result. So make sure it's the result that you want. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the playlist of all the other um, homeschool mamas and what their resolutions are. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Until next time, bye. And um, to better help you, Find a predict, uh, to better help you find a productivity. Why can't I say productivity? Productivity. Okay. To better help you find a productive. Oh my gosh. What is happening? <laughs>